Hello siblings and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Cinnamon McGee. Hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications. Ace, hey. This is my cat Ace. Hello. Ace, don't you want to be on the camera? Today we are going to be talking about the most binge-worthy Netflix shows. Now, there are like hundreds of shows on Netflix and obviously I've not seen all of them, so there's probably some that aren't on this list. If you guys have any other ideas, then comment them down below because then that's more ideas for us to watch. And if you guys have seen these, then let me know what you think about the shows. Gonna be honest, this is not gonna be like a bunch of basic shows. Yes, I'm gonna mention the basic shows, but that'll be like at the end and I'm only gonna say the best of the basics. So let's just get started and talk about the best shows you've probably never even heard of. Okay. The 100. The 100 is a really, really good show. It's kind of like a drama action type show. It's basically about these people who live in space because Earth was contaminated and then they send the kids down while the parents stay back and just kind of like see what happens to see if Earth is inhabitable again. Lots and lots of crazy stuff happens. There's five seasons. Wait, did they just release the sixth? I think they might have just released the sixth season and it is so good. And the main characters I love so much. You'll literally just fall in love with the show so fast. So definitely give it a chance. Next up, this one might be basic, but I feel like that many people don't talk about it and it's how to get away with murder. I watched the first season and it was really good I need to keep watching it but basically it just talks about these law students and their teacher and they're all like they like go to her house and work on law stuff I don't really know and it talks about how to get away with murder that's what their class is because they're gonna be criminal lawyers and like help people get out of crimes like defense lawyers you know so it's really really good and there's a lot of plot twists the next one is Atypical. I think there's two seasons right now. I've only watched the first season, but basically it just follows the main character who has autism and his sister follow them along in their life. And it's just really cool because it shows like a different perspective that you probably don't see. And it's actually really entertaining. So definitely check that one out. Once Upon a Time. If you have not watched this show, I swear it was like super, super popular a while ago, but if you haven't, it is so good. It basically takes all your childhood fairy tales, like literally all of them, Cinderella, Snow White, Peter Pan, all of them, literally all of them, and it puts them into like a show and they all have their, like, okay, so basically, <laughs> I don't know how to explain. They all get taken out of their fairy book land and put into this town, and they don't know that they are, like, you know, Cinderella, Snow White, all the people. This random girl comes into town, and she's, like, the chosen one, and she has to, like, expose everyone for what, the, what they are because a spell was put on their town that they wouldn't know that they're from a fairy land. And then it's just so good, and once you get to when Captain Hook is in it, he's so hot and you're just gonna love the fact that you watched it. So, I think there's like five seasons of that. There's a lot, so that's always a plus. Okay, if you're into more like superhero type shows, then you should watch The Flash and The Arrow. I only saw a few episodes of The Arrow like when I was growing up, my brothers would watch it, but I started The Flash with my fiance and it's kind of repetitive and kind of boring, but the budget gets better the more you watch it. But if you like superheroes, it's basically, you know, good guy, beats the bad guys every episode type thing. It's kind of repetitive, but there is a, like a storyline going on in the background. It's like dramatic, you know? So if you like those kind of shows, The Arrow or The Flash, they even like tie in together. They like show up in each other's shows. So that's kind of cool. Okay, getting into more like, um, like FBI type shows, starting with Psych. So basically I've seen every episode of the show like 1200 times. It's really funny. Sean Spencer, this is my partner Imhotep or he cometh in peace. Go ahead, show her your cometh in peace face. And the two main characters are pretending to be psychics. The one main character is a psychic and the other one is like his helper. And they go to the Santa Barbara Police Department, tell them that they're psychics and they solve murders just because they're like really, I don't know, what's the word? He has FBI skills basically, like he can look and just be like, oh, obviously this happened, but the police don't catch on to it. And I don't know, every, it's kind of one of those shows you could watch the episodes out of order, but it's kind of fun to watch them in order because once again, there's a story happening in the background. It's kind of a copy paste show. Every episode is like, there's a murder, he solves it, 
but it's really funny. The two main characters are always joking, and then the actual police department characters are really good too. So if you're into those kind of shows, that one is a good, like, funny one. Next up, we have White Collar. If you guys have not seen this show, it is so good. It's another one of those, like, FBI agent shows. It kind of is a little bit copy and paste every episode, but they have a really good backstory that makes every episode super entertaining. So it's honestly a little bit more entertaining than your typical, like, FBI agent shows. Are those my teeth? Yes. Actually, no. I don't want to know. The main character is super fine. Matt Bomber is the actor who plays Neil, the main character. Basically, Neil was an art thief. He would, like, forge art and stuff, and he got caught, and then they let him work for the FBI agents if instead of being in jail, and he has to wear this, like, anklet, and yeah. So, it's really, really good. Next up, we have Blacklist. I've actually only seen a few episodes of this, but if you're into FBI shows, it's kind of like the same idea as White Collar, from what I remember. It's like a guy goes to work for the FBI um, instead of being in jail or something like that. I don't really know. I remember watching a few episodes though and it was really good, so check that out. Quantico. Now this is not your typical like copy paste every episode the same thing's gonna happen. This one actually like shows character development and stuff. So I really like this because there's flash forwards throughout the whole entire like seasons. So you know how the season is gonna end but you are like what? How did she get there? So basically it's a bunch of people and they're going to Quantico which is where you become an FBI agent and it kind of follows their journey and how hard it is but it also has these flash forwards to a terrorist attack and you're like how are they involved? I don't understand! And it's really cool. So definitely check that out. It is not what you're expecting. It's not like your typical FBI show. So even if you're not into FBI shows, this is a really good like drama action show. Okay, this one might be a little bit basic, but Sabrina the Teenage Witch. This is such a good show. It kind of scares me to watch it by myself, and sometimes I question if I even really should watch it, but it's really good. Basically, the main character, her name's Sabrina, and she goes to a regular school, but when she turns 16, I believe, she has to become a witch, and she doesn't want to become a witch because you have to, like, sign the devil's book, and she doesn't believe. The church is basically, like, the evil church. I forget what they call it. They follow, they're basically Satan, Satan worshippers, and she's, like, a good person, so she doesn't want to do that but she's like conflicted because her friends versus her family and what does she do and bad things happen to her and yeah I think there's two seasons and they're both my camera died so now the quality just like downgraded but we're still here trying okay um but Sabrina the Teenage Witch is actually a remake of an old tv show I'm pretty sure and they just made a new one I love the actors in it you'll probably recognize a lot of the actors so that's cool there's also just so many plot twists that you don't see coming and it's a really good show to watch around like Halloween but um honestly I'll watch it anytime the next one is Limitless if you have not seen this show oh my gosh it is one of the best shows I have ever watched I was addicted to it. I wanted to watch it like all the time. Unfortunately, there's only one season. I don't know why they stopped making it. Maybe back then it didn't do as good, but it is such a good show. First, you have to actually watch the movie. So that's kind of fun because it's like a show out of a movie. So in the movie, basically there's this drug called Z and T or T, T and Z, Z and T. What is it called? <laughs> I think I got it. NZT. NZT is what the drug is. Um, basically, it makes you super, super smart. It like opens your eyes to what you can't see when you have normal eyes. And so in the show, it takes a guy who is depressed and unmotivated. His house is a mess. He has to write this book, but he just can't get it done. He pops these pills that like his brother and ex-brother-in-law gave him or something. He is just like pff, mind blown. But little does he know that the drug is very, 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 very addictive and there's a lot of bad people involved in it and you can basically die if you don't take the drug but you also die if you take the drug. And so the show is about FBI agents and they discover the drug NZT. I don't exactly remember how it starts but basically the main character gets to legally take NZT so that they can track how he reacts to it because he has this immunity shot that the main character from the movie gives him because now he's like the senator. That kind of just spoiled the movie, but I'm talking about the TV show, so it's fine. Um, yeah. It is a really, 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 really good show. Just like how they show what NZT does to you is like insane. It's epic and I really wish they made more of them because it is such a good show. Ugh. 
Okay, another FBI show. It's called iZombie. I feel like not that many people know about it. I think there's like three or five seasons somewhere in there. Uh, basically, there's this drug. Wow, love shows about drugs. Um, there's this drug that turns... I hope I don't get demonetized for talking about drugs. Not real drugs, fake drugs from shows. Anyway, this girl, she is about to become a surgeon. She has a fiance. She's being really, really successful. She's close with her family. She goes on this boat party and everyone who's taking the drug turns into zombies and obviously they turn each other into zombies. So she wakes up on a beach and she's in a body bag and she's like, whoa, what? I'm dead. The way that zombies work in this is that they can fully function normally. And whenever they eat people's brains, they have like visions of what those people were doing. So you kind of like become the person that you're eating in their brains. And so she goes and works at a morgue for the FBI, I believe. It might, wait, it might just be the police. I don't really know. Anyway, and so whenever these murder victims come in, she eats their brains and then she has these like visions and she claims to be like a psychic type thing. And then she works with one of the police persons and solves the case because she can see she can literally see the murders when she eats the brains. But then there's like a bunch of bad guys who are zombies and they like go and kill innocent people and sell their brains to rich people that they turn into zombies. So it's a really good storyline and everything just gets all jumbled up and crazy and she had to break up with her fiance and all her friends and family are concerned and she's super pale obviously because she's a zombie and everyone's kind of confused, but it's a really good show. Definitely recommend. It is like really addicting, so be careful. Next up, I have The Greenhouse Academy. This one I feel like is more of like a kid's show. Like I feel like I would've watched this in middle school, but I don't know why, I just watched it and it was kind of annoying, but I kind of liked it. I couldn't decide, cause it's kind of weird, like not very good acting and honestly like low budget. But like, if you want something to watch that's not like super intense, this is a good one. Basically, I did write down cause I honestly don't remember what it was about, but it's about a brother and sister and they go to an academy that their mom went to, but their mom was an astronaut and passed away in an accident when she like went up in rocket then there's just a bunch of like drama and friends and craziness that goes on at the academy so it's it's pretty good going along with academy shows the umbrella academy if you have not seen the umbrella academy i feel like it was popular a little bit ago definitely go watch it right now hopefully they'll be coming out with new seasons soon i'm pretty sure it's a netflix original and netflix originals are always good so you know it's gonna be good basically it's about these kids who are superheroes and they're like foster dad had taught them i don't really understand what happened honestly i don't remember basically there's like seven or eight kids and they all have superpowers and they're learning how to control them and then they like decide to just live normal life but then bad things happen so they all come back together into their like academy house honestly don't really remember what happened so it's good so i don't spoil it but i remember it being like super super good it's kind of weird and it takes like two episodes to kind of get used to and be like okay do I like this? But once you get like on that third, fourth episode, you are hooked and it's amazing. So definitely, definitely check that one out. Next up, if you have not seen Black Mirror yet, there's like four seasons and it's really good. It takes like a really unique turn on life and it just talks about like future technologies. None of the episodes tie into each other so you can just watch them at like whenever, whichever ones you want. There's some like really weird ones that I would not recommend watching but like there's one where they implant this thing into her daughter's head but then her daughter like grows up and she's annoyed because her mom is like literally always watching her and can block her from like hearing and seeing certain things uh so it's like technology that probably shouldn't exist so each episode is completely different um some of them are kind of scary some of them are just really cool and interesting and I've only seen like maybe 10 episodes total but it's really interesting Next is a less crazy one, The Fosters, which is really just a dramatic show, but it is so good. So it's about a show that follows these two moms who adopt a bunch of kids. One of them is like the birth son of one of the moms, and then the rest were all adopted from foster care. The main character is starts the first episode, she like comes into the house from Juvie. Then you find out that she went to Juvie for kind of like a bad reason, like she probably shouldn't have gone to Juvie. And then she goes to like rescue her brother, and then they end up taking them in as foster children even though they already have like a bunch of kids. So I don't know, it's just really cool and there's a lot of drama and it's just, it's just a fun one. 
another drama we have the carrie diaries this one's kind of older and it's a little bit slow paced but it's a really good show it basically follows this girl named carrie she wants to live in new york and she gets this internship and it just kind of follows her life and there's this boy and i feel like i might spoil it if i talk about it so <laughs> just go watch it next up we have another netflix original ozark so i have only seen like two episodes of this and it was really good i don't know why i stopped watching it but it kind of follows like the drug cartel type thing and it actually is filmed and takes place near where i live in the ozarks of missouri so that's really cool if you didn't know missouri is like the meth capital of the world so of course um a show like ozark would take place here but it's a really good show. Check it out if you're into those kind of shows. And now just for some honorable mention of basic shows everyone's seen but you definitely should still watch. The Netflix original You follows a character who is really creepy and it basically the whole show is about how someone can get into your life who is like a really bad person without you noticing. So you need to be more cautious but it takes place in New York and it's really cool. Grey's Anatomy is great. I stopped watching when a certain someone died, and if you've seen the show, we all know who. This show is super dramatic. I stopped watching because everyone ends up dying, but basically it takes place in a hospital, everyone's surgeons, and you feel like you are a surgeon when you watch this. So if you have not seen it, you should probably watch at least like eight seasons. There's like 13 or something. Obviously The Office, always a good one. Um, I don't really like binge watch The Office as much as like if I don't know what to do, if I'm just trying to like fall asleep or something, I might just throw on The Office in like the background while I'm cooking or anything like that. Really funny and I mean everyone knows what The Office is. I don't know if this one was basic or not so I just threw it in this pile but New Girl, I feel like a lot of people have seen it. If you haven't, it's really, really good. It follows a girl character who applies to be the roommate of these boys. And they're like, oh, why would we want a girl as a roommate? But they end up accepting her. She never like catches feelings for any of them. It's just like a funny girl guy friendships. I don't know, it's funny and it's just, it's a good one. Obviously, I have to say Riverdale. I'm a huge fan of Riverdale. Um, third season doesn't really make any sense. It was not the best writing, but it's fun to make fun of. And it's still like, good it basically follows these teenagers who go through stuff that like teenagers don't go through like they try to solve police cases and all their parents are somehow involved in gangs and murders and stuff i don't know but it's really good if you haven't seen it go check it out i know a lot of people don't want to watch it because it's so basic but it is really good and cole sprouse is in it so can't say no to that last but not least for our netflix shows we have vampire diaries now i could go off about vampire diaries i love it so much i'm on season eight right now so please don't spoil it for me but oh it is so good so basically it follows this girl elena who's just a typical girl she goes to high school and she lives in this place called mystic falls little does her and all her friends know that it is like a magical town with magical history vampires and witches and werewolves all exist in this town or at least they like come back and move in so the two brothers who are really hot and everyone always debates who's better i'm definitely team damon there's damon and stefan they move in they think that elena is this other girl named Catherine that they used to be obsessed with who is also a vampire so they're both like over 100 years old but they look about 17 to 20 something or at least that's a role they play they don't actually they look like they're older but you know how it is in tv shows anyway so then all their friends get involved you find out that certain ones of them are witches some of them turn into vampires and like there's so many characters involved it's super dramatic and there's eight seasons and there's so many plot twists season seven was one of my favorites because it did like flash forwards and you're like how is that even possible so yeah definitely just keep watching it i've taken my time with it because i love it so much um i'm not going to spoil it though so vampires and they're hot that's all you need to know so then if you watch the vampires and after that there's the originals that follows the original vampires which you don't get to know until about season three or four somewhere in there and then i actually just figured out this but after the originals there's a show called the legacy that follows i think it was like klaus's daughter or something so apparently it has to do with the same stuff so if you're into vampire diaries there's two other ones to watch and i'm definitely gonna watch them when i'm done with vampire diaries so that's all my netflix ones now i'm gonna recommend just like a few that aren't on netflix that if you can find they are really really good 
Right now, season four is airing of Rick and Morty. It is one of the best shows ever. It is so funny. It's about a grandpa and the son, and the grandpa is the smartest person in the universe. He has like a portal gun where he can travel between dimensions and worlds and through space and all that stuff. And then he just goes on adventures with his grandson. It's really good. It's really funny. Um, I really like watching The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise. It's just drama and I love making fun of it. So that's always good. Mandalorian is on Disney Plus. It is a show about Star Wars. I've actually never seen Star Wars, but I actually really love The Mandalorian, mostly because Baby Yoda. Episode 5 just got released, so if you haven't seen it yet, go catch up. And then, two honorable mentions, Prison Break. I don't know where you could possibly find this show, but it is so good. I'm so mad they took it off Netflix. There are five seasons. Michael Schofield, the, mo the main character, is super hot, and he goes... He gets a tattoo of the prison that his brother is in because his brother was falsely accused of killing someone. It was like the senator's son or something like that. And so he's on death row. So his brother goes to break him out and it's just craziness. And then Breaking Bad, I've never seen this one, but Dallin wanted me to mention it. So go check it out. <laughs> Okay, that is all the best Netflix slash non-Netflix shows that are good to binge watch over this next holiday season or just life in general. I know this is longer than these videos usually are, but I just had so many, I couldn't give you just 10. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed my recommendations. Once again, if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and support me. That would mean like the literal world to me. That's my Christmas present from you guys. Hit that subscribe button notifications. Yeah, that's it. Thank you guys. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.